conditional and joint probabilities are concepts in probability theory that are that are quite useful when multiple events are occurring. A joint probability is quite easy to describe. It's the probability that an event A and an event B occur at the same time. So let's take, for example, that event A is the probability of landing. Let's say that A is defined as, we have to define the event first. A is the, that a coin flip lands as heads. And let's say that B is the event that a die rolls as a two. We can easily calculate the probability of a. This is simply equal to half. We can also equally calculate the probability of b. This is equal to one and six, right? Fair die. Now let's ask the question, what's the probability of A and B occurring together? This is the joint probability. Well, the probability that you both land as a head and roll a two, well, these are independent events. One doesn't influence the other. So you have to have both Coin, landing as a head and ro uh, rolling a die, these are just these two multiplied together. Right? It's one half times one sixth, which is equal to one twelve. That doesn't seem particularly insightful, but things get a little more interesting when we talk about events that are not independent. Let's define another event, event C, as the die roll being even. So now what's the probability of B and C occurring at the same time? Well, if it turns out that the die comes out as a two, then we know that the roll is also even. So this is just one over six because it doesn't constrain it anymore. Similarly, the probability that probability of C all by itself, right, is equal to a half. But here we did not multiply one sixth by a half because we know that there's an interaction factor. These are not independent events. So now let's ask a different question. Let's ask the likelihood, let's ask for the probability of two events occurring but knowing that one of the events already occurred. So let's ask what the probability of B and C occurring is, right? This event of rolling a die as a two and the die being even, but we know that this actually occurred. We know that C occurred. Let's then divide it by the probability that the die roll was even. We know that. I'm telling you that this occurred. We're asking for the probability that these two events occurred at the same time, but we know that I'm just, we're just speculating. I'm not speculating, but we're just defining. We're saying that C occurred. The probability of the die roll being even happened. We know that it is even. So if we know that it's even, what is the probability that it lands as a two? Well, that's this expression is 
1 over 3. Because if we know it's even, then it's either a 2, a 4, or a 6. And it's one of those three, so it's 1 and 3. This is the same right, as 1 over 6, which was the joint, the joint probability, divided by probability of C, which was 1 over 2 which is equal to two over six, which is equal to one over three, right? It's the same. That's quite cool. And we define this expression as the joint, as the conditional probability. What's the probability that B occurs knowing that C occurs? And this is equal to B joint C, over P of C. I'm just rewriting this again so, and so we have it in green. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it with A and B. The probability that some event A occurred knowing that some event B occurred is equal to the joint probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Now it gets a little more interesting because this idea of two events occurring together is not by any means selective for A coming in front of B. Two events occurring simultaneously are just two events occurring simultaneously. So there's actually two ways of writing this. I mean, we have this. Let's look at this. If we have the probability of event A intersecting with probability B, that these two occur together. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in the middle and show it interpreted in two ways. Then on one hand, right, this is equal to we can divide this by, by B as we did before. And over here show our conditional probability. So this is the conditional probability of A conditioned on B. And normally I would have this right in the previous, in the previous slide, I had this divided by B, but we'll just multiply that over here times the probability of B. Same thing, I haven't changed the equation. But I needn't, this is the same, right? The probability of A and B happening together is also the pro same probability of B and A happening together. So there's another way that we can write this on this side, such that this is also the probability of B conditioned on A times the probability of A. And if this is true, if this is equal on both sides, that means this and this are equal. And if that's the case, then let's throw this B over over here and rewrite this AB by itself. And we'll do that one in yellow. So here I'm gonna write the probability of A conditioned on B times the probability, divide, and I'm dividing this on the other end, so I'm gonna set this equal to this guy here, probability of B conditioned on A times the probability of A and I'm going to pull this guy and just divide it over here, divided by the probability of B. And this equation is Bayes' theorem. And it is the basis for all statistical inference. The conditional probability of A conditioned on B is equal to the probability of B conditioned on A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. These ideas actually have very common names that are often thrown around. This value here is the posterior. This value here is the prior. This value here is the likelihood. 
This value here, this term over here is the evidence. You'll also see these two terms called the marginal probabilities. The marginal probability is just the probability of an event by itself. So these are both marginal probabilities. But if you have an event that you're trying to figure out the probability of and you know some other event occurred already, right? You have some point of evidence about it that you know these two are related, then you can condition the likelihood of A occurring based on the evidence you've seen in B and rewrite it this way. Because here what you're asking, you're saying is, well, how is the probability that the evidence that I'm seeing is what it is if I assume that A is the event of interest that I'm looking at? You multiply that by how likely A event is by itself and you divide it by the probability that you see the evidence B that you got and you actually will get your posterior. And it all comes out of this relationship that the, that the that the joint probability can be written in two different ways of conditional probability.